All right, guys, welcome back. Beautiful afternoon out here in central Ontario, Canada, out here with the bugs and my tractor and my sawmill. And what we're going to do today, I'm going to take that white pine log you see on the forks behind you, and I'm hopefully going to turn it into some nice lumber like these pieces you see right here. Now, these pieces are just sort of sitting here for a little bit of time, uh, just until I get that lumber shed all squared away. The lumber shed, as you've seen, I'm putting an addition onto, and so I didn't want to go and throw those in there until I got that fixed up. Anyways, it's sitting here. This is some of the white pine that I milled last day with my dad. Uh, it turned out pretty good. What we ended up doing, we got some 4x4s out of it, as you guys can see. Uh, we also got a few boards along the top. And if you remember, this was a pretty scraggly looking piece of log. This was not a premier piece. So we got something out of it, and that's the main thing. Now, on that point about laying out lumber to dry, I, t I typically would never lay out lumber like this in the open sun. Um, I, would, I wouldn't say it's bad to lay it out here. But if I was going to leave it here for a period of time, I would put spacers over the top of these boards, then put like a sheet of uh, sheet of tin or something over it, roofing steel, and that way uh, the sun doesn't beat down on it. I don't think the the, the rain hitting it's a big deal because the rain will evaporate pretty quickly. What is a big deal is too much heat on the wood. Uh, you can get all kinds of problems, twisting and checking and cracking and cupping and all that in the direct sun so I would typically never do it for those of you who are wondering why it's here it's just because I didn't have room for it uh, at my other spot anyways that logs coming up here in just a minute using the forks today just because I was moving around some IBC cages of firewood recently uh, typically I would use the grapple I like the grapple a little bit more I can sort of maneuver the log but hey you use what you have at the time Onwards, up to the front here, my HM130 Max, this is what's going to do the cutting. I've had great luck with this so far uh, since I've owned it, and I think uh, today will be no different. So, a little bit different in terms of how the video is going to go today. Normally, what I would do is I would uh, talk to you guys as if I'm talking to you now, but I thought, you know what, I'm not going to talk to you through the camera today. I'm going to talk over top of the video today. So, I'm going to put the log up here. I'm going to go through as if I was cutting the log and no one was watching and then I'll narrate it. I'll explain to you guys exactly what I'm thinking in my head as I'm going through the steps that I would typically go through on route from a log to a piece of lumber. So hopefully those of you who are brand new to sawing, well, maybe it's going to help you a little bit. If you're not brand new to sawing, well, you guys can help me down below. Throw down some comments, some things you do a little bit differently because, hey, I'm not perfect. I am not... Uh, I'm not going to stop learning anytime soon, so it's always great to hear different ideas and add them to my, my toolbox of ideas, as I say. Anyways, guys, that's it for me. Let's get down to it. Here we go. Trying to get the flattest part of the log across the log bunks here. Not very easy because this log is quite crooked. I'm using a tape measure here to try to figure out what height I want my first cut at. I'm trying to minimize the amount of waste but also making it so that I don't just guess. As I set the saw head height, just to make sure it doesn't move at all, I always set my final height as I'm cranking upwards as opposed to cranking downwards. That just guarantees the cables are perfectly tight. No matter what type of wood I'm cutting or how sharp the blade is, I always enter the log nice and slow, that way I can judge that everything's gonna work out just as it should, and then I let the saw do the cutting.
one habit of mine as I'm back dragging or pulling the sawmill back to the starting position is that I always crank up the saw head just a little bit and in my head that sort of reassures me that I'm not going to bump the blade off. I'm using the tape measure here to figure out the maximum width for each board I'm going to be able to get out of this log. I'm looking at the hook in this log here and trying to figure out how much wood I'm going to lose. I decided I cut this log down just a little bit more and what that'll do is increase the width of my overall cant. This slab piece that I'm cutting, I'm going to cut the edges off at a later time. When I rotate the log, I like to rotate it 180 degrees. That way I can guarantee that the bottom is going to be parallel to the cut I make on the top. And it holds the log nice and steady. I'm just taking one more quick measurement here to make sure that I can maximize the size of my can, and then I'll go ahead and make the cut. As you can see, the bugs are pretty fierce these days. You guys may notice that the lines that I drew on my log stops in a previous episode, they're not on the sawmill here. That's just because I filmed this just before that other video. I tried to position this crooked log as flat along the top as possible. That way I can make the cut with as little waste as possible. You can just take these log stops completely out because there's little welded pieces right on the log bump to catch the edge of the cant. However, in my case, sometimes the cant has a little bit of bark on it, so I just lower the log stops down. That way the cant can't jump up over it. I'm trying to position this slab piece so that I can get just a little bit of lumber out of it. I'm trying to make it so that the top edge of this slab is as flat or parallel to the log bumps as possible. A little bit easier said than done. As you can see, I'm breaking up the tape measure to maximize the amount of lumber from this crooked piece.
can also go ahead and put like a two by four or four by four or some other piece of lumber in between the log stop and this slab piece. What that'll do is, especially if the slab piece is thin, it won't allow it to flex when you clamp down on that log clamp. All right guys, well, there you have it. I took that relatively crooked white pine log and I made it into something useful. And you guys can see the pile right here. Now I didn't make all of this out of that one piece, but I did make some of the pieces on top. Now, if I had to go to a lumber yard and buy this, I'm sure it wouldn't be free. I don't exactly know how much it would be. But last time I went to Home Depot and just sort of browsed around, a two by four by eight pine spruce or fir was $8 Canadian. I don't know what it is anymore. That was probably about a month and a half ago or so. But I can imagine that stuff wouldn't be free and so making it will save me some money. Let's just not talk about all the equipment that I have to support this sawmill, but let's just say I'm saving money. Now aside from that, overall if you're going to cut a log like I did here, you just really got to get your sawmill set up so that the blade's tracking nice. Once it's tracking nice, it's just a matter of putting, well, A, a sharp blade on it, B, some fuel in it, and then make sure there's lubrication. Aside from that, everything else just is more or less just uh, muscle memory, as we'll say. So hopefully this video helped you guys, especially you guys who are out there just starting on that journey of sawing wood. I wouldn't call it rocket science, but there's some things to learn. So hopefully this helps you. If uh, you guys wouldn't mind doing me the favor, as I mentioned before, share some of the things you guys do in order to make sawing just that much easier. Who knows? It might help me, it might help other people. Guys, thanks for watching. Take care. Make sure you subscribe and I'll see you next time.